You know, it's I, I tell my wife all the time, it's tough to describe New York City to people. Like I was telling you guys last week, and I say it on stage, when New York City catches a cold, when New York City sneezes, everybody catches a cold. And I truly have always believed that because I saw the power in New York. In 84, if you went to 80, if you went to New York like I did and walked around, and then you got on the plane and went to LA, two different fucking energies. How do I know? Because I did it. I was in LA for fucking two weeks in 84. And it sucked compared to New York City. I mean, it was a vibrant. They had Sunset Strip and all that shit. But New York was New York. Five fucking barrows of people getting stabbed. You can't fucking buy that shit anywhere else. You understand me? And when I say people getting stabbed, yeah, people getting stabbed. But you've had a good time in New York. You had a fucking music scene. I got to be honest with you, that was second to none. I'm spoiled now. Like people, like Jimmy Florentine is always like, you want to go see this show? You want to go see that show? Not really. Not fucking really. You know, I saw these bands 30 years ago in a small place for a third, for a fucking third of what we're paying now. A third. Sheila E. Prince and Nucleus at the fucking Ricks or the Roxy. You know, 15 bucks. 15 bucks for Prince Nuclear, and this is a 1984 album. It don't get no stronger than that. Don't, don't come to me with your fucking bullshit. You know, I saw all these little fucking bands all over the place. I went to see Shad Day at a fucking restaurant on the first album in '85 in New York City. Who could tell you that shit? You know, I didn't. I, I didn't know what the fuck. I, it's not like I was Mr. Fucking Entertainment. You know me. I'm no Julie McCoy. But I had friends that would go. This band is playing here. This guy, you know, they, they were limo drivers in the city or bartenders in the city, and they had their ear on that shit. You know, they didn't advertise Sade. You weren't going to get advertised. You know, I still remember fucking it being like 80, 78, 81. Like the 81 Stones tour. Like there were fucking rumors that they would play Nyack to warm up in the city. The Stones would call up a club and say, hi, we're the traveling fucking douchebags and uh we want to play your club and they would go okay and all of a sudden Mick Jagger Keith Richards would walk in and it'd be fucking Ron Wood and it'd be the Stones doing an impromptu set anywhere in the fucking city that's why when when you listen to uh the Rolling Stones some girls you could hear the grittiness of New York City that's why I'm really proud of that I was a kid I was a fucking kid, and I watched the Stones on Saturday Night Live, and all these people going crazy, and I'm like, hey, that's around the corner from me. When they were up there fucking doing shattered and all skinny and shit on heroin and jumping up and down, they were doing all that shit in fucking New York City. New York City was a fucking metropolis for a kid. It was just a fucking... Me- if you went into the city with 200 bucks, you had the time of your life. Pills cocaine, bitches, drinking on the street, staying out all fucking afternoon, like all fucking morning. How many times I went into the city at three in the fucking morning? Who goes out at three in the morning? Well, me and my buddies would go out like at 9.30, sit in a Jersey bar till nine, or three, and then at three in the morning go, what are we going to do? You going to go home? <laughs> Fuck no. We'd shoot over into, we'd go to this place, Ernie's Bar, on 38th Street, going from Kelly Boulevard down to my old house. After 3 o'clock, Ernie would sleep on his pool table. He would be hammered. And you would bang on the fucking door. Ernie, open up. And Ernie would come out. What the fuck do you want? Give me two cases of beer. You better have cash and you better be the full amount. We'd give him the full amount. He had the coldest fucking beer in the world. We'd put him in spackle buckets. Like those buckets of spackle, we put ice on it. We get a bag of ice from them. The beers were already fucking three quarters frozen. We shoot into the city. We put a mirror on the hood of the fucking car. We take our beers out and we drink from three thirty in the morning to possibly six six thirty outside. Nobody would say a word. When you're eighteen, you know how fucking strong you feel when you stayed out till six. And you tell your friends like, "What'd you do last night?" Oh, I stayed home and watched fucking the movie with the dog and get the fuck out of here. I went out. We went to Joe Mary's and then at 3 o'clock we hit the fucking city. 
We went over there. We snorted coke till 7 in the morning. We bumped into some freaks. Then we came home, went to bed. They pick you up at 12 again. They go get a nice little lunch at Hashways. A nice little fucking turkey and Swiss. Heavy on the salt and pepper. Fucking little potato salad. A bag of wise potato chips. A can of pepperoncinis and a 32-ounce fucking Coke. And then keep that fucking party alive. It was just tough to, you know, tough to fucking duplicate again. And I'll tell you, like I said to you, 1985 to leave New York City... That was a task in itself. It broke my heart. I'll never forget that fucking plane ride going. God damn it. I can't believe all these bands are coming. All these fucking... I, I remember going to see... The last summer I was here, I went to see Rod Stewart with that fucking douchebag didn't show up. Well, early in the morning, I can't sleep. What's that fucking guy's name? Uh, the guitar player that's fucking crazy. He fucking canceled. I went to see Huey Lewis in the news. I went to see Springsteen. I went to see Michael Jackson and this fucking six brothers. I went to see Prince. I saw all that shit in 84. Oh, my God. It was like one after the other, one after the other. You figure Fucko had born in the USA. The other fucking Michael Jackson had Victory Tour. I mean, all this music was out. He would look, I went to see the Pretenders at... Dog, I'm telling you, I went to see the Pretenders at the Garden on a fucking Monday night. It was just amazing, the concerts that would come here. You'd have all these venues. And fuck the Meadowlands and the Nassau Coliseum. Because in the summer, all this shit would open up the pier and all those little concert venues on the water. Come on now. Fucking tremendous. I can't, you know, it's a shame. Like, if this was 15 years ago, I'd be in that city four fucking times a week. I'm excited. In a way, I'm excited to be going into the city to do comedy. And I'll tell you why. I'm a fucking city guy. When you look at me, there is only one place where I'm from. When I open up my mouth, you know I'm from either or. But there's only one place where I remember going over to fucking Harlem when I was a kid with my friends. And I'd walk out and go get a bag of weed and go get a fucking bag of potato chips and a slice of pizza. And my friends would say to me, dog, you walk around that city like it's second nature. He, hello? I was fucking raised there. You know, I was what do you think? I stayed in playing on my fucking computer on TikTok when I was a fucking eight years old? I was fucking out there, dog. I did not, you know, I look at my daughter this morning, like, they don't have no fucking school this week. So 